So the purpose of the working group, the Bader Stadium Working Group was established by Mayor Przicki to review the future use, maintenance, and management of this facility. The final findings of the working group, including the summary of the comments from the public meeting, will be presented to the mayor. So I want to first thank all the members of the working group. It's been a kind of a quick process. We knew we had a, a short amount of time to try and come up with a good solution and some ideas. And I'll, when I uh, say your name, you can stand or acknowledge the crowd if need be. Desmond Baker, who's a principal of Desmond Baker and Associates. Uh, Ray Bevins, who's a director of the State Parks and Recreation Department. Nami Chiwoka, Wilmington City Council. How you doing, Nami? Ernest Trippi Congo, Wilmington City Council, Second District. Demetrius DeRamus, Senior, Youth Football Coach, Organizer, Labor's Union International. Charles Bud Friel, Wilmington City Council, Eighth District. Earl Jeter, Principal Jeter and Johnson, LLC. Uh, Earl could not be here this evening, but Earl was the former city auditor and now member of uh, WHA. Uh, Kevin Kelly, myself, Carla Levinson, attorney, Levinson Law Firm, and resident of the Triangle Neighborhood Association. Tom Ogden, Deputy Chief of Staff, Office of the Mayor, lived across the street for a long while. And Charles Potter, State Representative, First District. Charles Potter, Jr., State Representative, First District. So this is I am Kevin F. Kelly, Sr. Okay. So I'm just going to go through some slides for everyone. Um, the history of Baynard Stadium. It was opened in 1922 on land donated by Samuel Baynard. Uh, the major renovations were in 1956, which was a good year. That was the year I was born. The last substantial upgrade took place in 1972. Up until 1969, the city of Wilmington was responsible for the operations of the city. And then we entered into a 40-year lease with Newcastle County to operate uh, for the stadium. And then in 1998, the Newcastle County agreement ended when the state uh, legislators passed legislation establishing the Wilmington State Park. And from 1998 to present, DENREC, Division of Natural Resources, has assumed operational responsibilities over the last two decades, but the city, the city still retains ownership. Under the present situation, the city continues to own the stadium and land, with DENREC responsible for managing the stadium. Now we'll go down memory lane a little bit. This was the original pictures of Baynard Field when it started probably back in the 20s. So now we're going to look at the potential cost of a future stadium. The working group, the working group with Bancroft Construction slash Macintosh Engineering was uh, volunteered to develop initial cost estimate of a future reconstruction of the stadium. So we thought it was appropriate to bring in someone who have an actual estimate from an engineering background. Denrec had did some estimates, and there were some other estimates that had been floating around. So the $12.6 million in construction costs plus contingencies would replace the stands, install a turf field, provide adequate locker room and bathrooms, new scoreboards, a new track, improvements to the parking lot and road, including lighting, a new press box, a new concession area. So when, we, when the group met, we looked at several options regarding uh, the potential uses or development of Baynard Stadium. So the first one was to maintain the status quo. And just as it said, it would be the city ownership and the state operations. There'd be no additional capital dollars that would be put into it. So as you'll see, you'll see an outcome and the fiscal impact to the city would be zero. Right now the city does not put any funding into Boehner Stadium nor receive any funding from Boehner Stadium. The state would continue its regular maintenance and the city would continue as owner. Um, the current deterioration and limitations would continue. Any future condemnation of the north stands, locker rooms and bathrooms or other critical components of the facility could result in the stadium no longer being practical function. So things like that happen and might impact what the use of the stadium is. The stadium physically has, has significant physical deterioration and practical physical limitations. The annual operating costs of the stadium exceed the average annual revenues collected for the stadium. $45,000 is the annual average revenue over the last five years, while the operational costs for the same period are about $150,000. So some examples of the physical deterioration are the south stands, which we're aware of, uh, the north stands, but they have, uh, Denrick has somebody come in every now and then to look at the engineering and, and how long those stands are good for, and we've got another two-year approval. 
The track was originally installed in 1998, and it's coming to the end of its lifespan. And then the road network requires some resurfacing regarding the stop and ongoing the drainage issues. So some more examples are, for, and for those that have gone to Boehner Stadium, these are self-evident that anybody who's been there is a parent of what happens there. The gate entrance, uh, there's no changing rooms for the showers or the referees. The lay of, of the stadium does not provide for use other than for nothing but football. Can't play soccer, can't play lacrosse there. Track has six lanes. We'd like to go to eight lanes. Portions of the stadium are not compliant with ADA accessible standards. The grass field, the usage is very limited and direct to prevent serious damage to natural surface. There's not enough parking to accommodate the visitors to the stadium. The road network does not provide emergency vehicles with adequate assets to the entire stadium. And no lighting is available in the adjacent parking lots. The public bathrooms and the locker rooms are nowhere near enough for all the individuals who use that. If you're a football team, you're just stuck everybody in that room. So just, just some updated photos that we have. We have some of the, the stands that were, that were completed. Thanks to Representative Potter for some of the funding that took care of that. Uh, we have um, these are the, the gatehouse that we have that comes in that's been there for some time. Uh, the bleachers, we talked about the ADA compliance issues with getting up and down those steep steps. This is the track itself um, that's used. You can see it's kind of wearing out. It's still used every day by teams, especially now that's getting spring and summertime. Uh, the, the high jump and the triple jump. This is one of the stadiums on the, is that the north side? The north side stadium at the bottom. Uh, you can see where that's up on the concrete that's been, it's over top of it. It's one of the locker rooms, correct? Small locker room for the teams to go into. Uh, the accessibility to the buildings, the parking lot, which every time anything going well, on, it's just packed with people and there's that slope. So that's just some background on some pictures of Boehner Stadium for those who may not have been there recently at all. So we looked at another option to consider, and this was a capital investment by the state. So we said, if the state of Delaware came in and put the operation, the capital dollars that would be needed to address the $12.6 million estimate, this is what we would be looking at. The city wouldn't have any in, in financial impact. The pathway would likely be the state funding through DENREC, but the average state of Delaware Park's annual capital rehabilitation over the last years has only been $1.6 million. And that's the, how many parks do you have to maintain, Ray, with that? 60. 60. So that 1.6 goes to 16, excuse me, goes to 16 parks that he has to do and up and down the entire state. So the park budget must, you know, serve capital rehabilitation needs for, for all of those parks. Uh, the Wilmington State Parks have already have a backlog of $30 million. So the current proposed FY18 rehab capital budget for the entire state budget, state parks division is about 2.5 million. The state legislator is facing about a $382 million deficit. And just to back up, other than outside, the 200,000 was in, in there last year. It's only been about $400,000 that's been put in Boehner Stadium over the last 17 years and little projects to maintain it. Okay. So option three is now we would look at the city of Wilmington coming in and putting their investment in. So this would be the city of Wilmington would pick up that $12.6 million through a bond issuance. So in order to do that bond issuance, it would be $18.4 million in debt service over 20 years. So that's the, it's kind of the same as the state one, but now the city has to come up with that. I think that would be very challenging for our budgets as we just went through a budget uh, that we just passed. It had some tough, tough decisions that had to be made. Um, and that one. So then the next one would be option number four which would be the capital investment by the city and the city assumes responsibility. So on this one, the city of Wilmington would be putting the capital dollars in and we would be maintaining, the, we would take over the operations of Boehner Stadium. So with that, it's the same, the debt would be about $22 million because we'd have to fund both the $12.6 million and the operational cost. In order for the city to take over, we'd have to hire the staff to, to maintain the stadium the, all the uh, supplies and equipment and the security that's involved with doing the stadium. So either reductions in the current capital budget for the city to make room for funding of a new stadium or a significant increase in the city's capital borrowing 
as well as an increase in the Parks and Recreation Department annual operation budget to cover the cost of operating the facility. So with this one, it would be another $1.1 million a year or so for the city to be able to come up with. So the final option was option five, which was a public-private partnership. So in this option, the city ownership, private operations, significant investments, likely a private entity. The fiscal impact to the city will be with little or no public cost. The pathway would be the city would put forth a public inquiry, either a request for proposal or a letter of intent, a letter of interest to gauge the interest from outside entities in possible capital investments. Possible conditions of a public-private partnership. These are conditions that would be part of, of the agreement that would possibly be submitted. Be long-term lease for operation responsibilities of stadium with certain commitments of necessary capital investment. So if we were gonna put it out, it would be a long-term lease and we'd have to be guaranteed some capital investment. The city would continue to own the stadium. We would not relinquish ownership of the stadium. Continued access for current users at rates that would be reasonable similar to current rates. So right now, uh, the schools that use Boehner Stadium pay a, pay a fee. Some of that is contingent upon the gate, I believe, Mr. Bevins, on football games. The more, the, more they're, the more people in there, the more they're paying, but there is a rate that all the schools are paying to use it, whether it be track, public, whatever that may be, uh, to be able to continue that. Access to the field's concession facilities for groups that rely on such sales for their fiscal stability. So if a group is coming in and has a football game, they would need to have access to the concession stand so they can sell the food during the game to bring in some profit to help them offset their cost. Responsibility of degree of oversight over the private entities operation of the city. So the city would still need to have some oversight as to what was going on. We'd have a, we wouldn't be just say here, you take it and we're not gonna have any responsibility over it. We'd have refusals and probably uh, proposals would have to come before the city for approval. And probably the most important one is reasonable future access for youth athletic events. We want to ensure that any youth athletic groups that want to use this stadium would have some reasonable access to be able to use that. And that'd be on weekends for football teams or whatever else athletic that may be or soccer or lacrosse that would come into it. So there are kind of the five scenarios that the group uh, has worked through um, that we were presenting to the mayor along with comments or suggestions that may come out from this meeting this evening. Again, I want to thank all the members of the committee for their hard work uh, in this. I think it was a, a good experience for all of us to see. There's a long way still to go with this process. And uh, Mr. Powell, do you have a comment? Good. First of all, I want to thank everyone for coming out. I'm State Representative Charles Potter, Jr. And let me just tell you, through this whole process, this is exactly what I envision of having the community out and have an input. That's all I said from day one when this took place. Secondly, I need to say that um, this was not a preliminary report from the committee. The committee has not come up with a preliminary report. These were raw numbers that were given to us to look at. And I, I really take exception to, first of all, we're working in a good direction. We have a good group of people working, but we don't want to skew the process in any way and for the mayor's office to submit this out as if these were a report from the committee is just unfair. We have a lot of work to do. This was very premature. They know it. We haven't looked at the income side. We haven't looked at the human capital value of this. So we have a whole lot of work. We haven't looked at if we, um, how we would sell rights to the field, to the stands, to just everything. Are we off to a good start? Yes. Does this give us a little snapshot of what's taking place? It does. And I want to thank every member, and particularly Desmond, for getting these raw numbers. They're raw numbers. And we want to bring everybody to the table. We had suggestions from the different schools that have not been involved in this process that need to be at the table, and more public input. So, you know, we want to move forward. We all want to make sure Banner Stadium is a great place to be, but we have to do it the right way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Uh, if, if, has everyone filled out their forms at all that they want to bring up or anyone pass them to the end and we'll bring them up? No. no. Okay. No, I was just trying to gather the, 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 the comments, so we wanted to try and get them and just take a look at there was common themes within the comments and I could answer those questions. If not, uh, there's a podium to that side if you would like to use that one. 
Or if you want to, huh? Okay. Do you want to stand where you're at, or? The work group was formed, I believe, back in April. Is that correct, Tom? The work group was formed back in April. The mayor created the work group and gave us 45 days or so to come up with some recommendations. So that's what the group has been working on the last few weeks. And this is what the purpose of the group was to come up with alternatives for the mayor to look at and review. So these five proposals will be submitted to the mayor for him to review and figure out the path forward regarding Bader State. Uh, we've met about probably five times, four times, I'd say. Uh, we, we're either going to have some, I would suggest if we want to speak, we'd go over to the, to the microphone. Is that okay with everyone? But again, I would hope that we have any questions that we put on a piece of paper that we can have some written re response back. Thank you. Yes, sir. Is, see, make sure that mic's on. Testing. My name's Gary Laudeman. Uh, I work for uh, Parks and Rec, and I've been at the stadium for 20 years. So I uh, have a little understanding of, of the, the working operations. I think one of the things that uh, back in, in April when this broke, I, 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 we, we, I don't think it's, the stadium's as bad as everybody thinks it is. Yes, there's improvements to be made, but um, I think that there are, there are some issues there. I think that the the 24 million, 12 million. I know you guys did a lot of work on that, but um, I do think that there's there's other avenues to pursue. Um, you know, the putting a synthetic field in there is is everybody. That's everybody's on that. Um, I, I think that you could get by with 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 the surface you have in there. Uh, have a uh, not not go to artificial turf. I think one of the things if you go to artificial turf, you're going to have around the clock constant feed on that. I think it's it's kind of regulated right now. Um, there, there are, there are, there is room to put youth groups in there right now. In the fall, you can only play so many games. There's only so many weekends that you can play football. Uh, there, there's not any room to put any more teams in there. If you're talking about practice, yeah, if you put a synthetic field in, you have practice abilities during the weeknights. That's one thing to consider. Uh, I also think that to produce revenue, uh, there's, there's a lot of options there. Um, advertisement, like you said, you know, scoreboard advertisement, putting banners, that's one thing the state never got into. I think that uh, in the 20 years of, of being there, I think that the state could have pursued some other avenues. I know their hands are tied in certain things, but to produce revenue. So I guess my point is that I don't think, yes, this, the, the bleachers were condemned. The, uh, yes, we know that the bleachers only have a two-year life expectancy. The, 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 uh, the locker rooms do need improvement. The concessions, and I agree on all that, but I, I think that uh, you don't have to make a major 12 million, 24 million dollar investment. I think you put a track in there, and, and the track, by the way, was put in 2001, not 1998. And we have made several band aids. We've had put several investments into the track. So my my thing is, is that I think all of the people that work there take pride in that stadium. Um, again, I just want to say it's not as bad as as everyone thinks it is. The pictures, yes, they they present a. a, a a picture of, of uh, you know, rundown, but it's not. I mean, there's improvements to be made. I just want to say from somebody that works there, I, I've been there 20 years, and uh, I think that, you know, there's, we got we to move forward, but, you know, I think that you guys are in the right direction, and I like, I like that place. I mean, it has a lot of history, so that's all I got. Well, well Gary, first and foremost, we want to thank you for coming this evening and working there and putting dedicated yourself to Boehner Stadium. I don't think any of us say that the stadium is in disrepair. It needs a little love, as I would say, uh, and I think that's the purpose here this evening, uh, to be able to find out what that direction will be. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Kerry Galloway, Sr. I'm the president of uh, No Limit Empowerment and Mentoring uh, You Program in Delaware. I just had a couple questions. One, how did the uh, committee get put together? And the other, one, the other question is, uh, would the public have a say on what's going to happen as far as being, being at the meetings and stuff like that? 
So the, the committee was put together by Mayor Perzicki under, and, you know, he cre cre created the committee with myself, Mr. Ogden, some people from the city, some legislatures, a youth football person, an engineer, and an individual from the neighborhood. So that committee was formed. So that committee was formed by the mayor? Correct. And then, so it was formed by the mayor, and that's, his, that's what it was formed by the mayor. And what was your other question, sir? What's the next steps? Would the public have a say on what, you know, is going to happen with Banner Stadium? The public will definitely have a say on Banner Stadium. Again, the purpose of the group is to give the mayor several options to review. Mm -hmm. And those options are for him to take forward, depending upon what options. All options he's going to try and consider will have some more public input. This is not the first and last of discussion on Boehner Stadium, I can assure you that. And the other question to piggyback off the first question was, so I don't know who the mayor knows or whatever, but I know it's people that I talk to, it's people sitting out here now that I thought should have been on the committee too. So people that's involved, you know, with, with Delaware all, all year round. You know, so I didn't understand that either, how the committee got picked. Well, as I said, I'm not going to, you know, the, the committee was picked by the mayor to be reflective of who he thought would be best to represent all the interest. Are there other people who may have been on committees and shouldn't have been? Anytime you do anything, there's always that that happens. I think the committee with Mr. Demetrius, he was here, it represented, you know, football for young people. We valued his input on what was going on. All of us have been very familiar with this issue and really what needs to happen. Right. I didn't say nobody shouldn't have been on the committee. I just said how did it get picked, and I thought it should have been more people on the committee that was on there. Okay. That's, that's all. I, I appreciate your all comments, right. sir. Thank you for coming. Hi, my name is Michelle Green. I'm a resident of the Triangle, and my name is Michelle Green. I'm a resident of the Triangle. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, first, I want to thank Representative Potter for uh, enabling us to reach this moment because it seemed like uh, months ago when this proposal was first made to do something about the stadium, um, it was on a fast track. Now it seems to have been slowed down to a reasonable speed, so thank you, Representative Potter. Um, I have some questions that apparently were not addressed by the Working Committee that I hope will be addressed. Uh, the first is, do any of the suggestions about Baynard Stadium involve changing its current use to a higher one, a better one, such as an indoor sports stadium for multiple sports, a cultural center, a recreational facility such as Hicks Recreation Center that has a library, any consideration of funding a recreation center at Christ Star King as an alternative to funding Baynard Boulevard? Any consideration of health issues being close to the highway and the railroad? This was a fact that was omitted from the facts that were presented in the history of the stadium because I-95 was built after the stadium was created. Any consideration of traffic problems due to one-lane entrances under the railroad tracks? I believe this was addressed. Any consideration about the lack of easy access by inner city families? Any consideration of noise during major sports events? What if I-95 were to be closed in the future and rerouted around the city to 495, a plan which was suggested during the recent campaign by Kevin Kelly? What are the safeguards for bidding to be a private partner, a private-public partnership, or any project that might go forward? And by the way, um, Alexander Hamilton, who was the, uh, one of the founders of our country, endorsed private-public partnerships. So I think that's probably a great idea. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. We will submit them as part of the record. Good evening. My name's Norman Griffiths. I was a city councilman for this district for 16 years. And uh, I think uh, the idea of, of having a public-private partnership, as I look at all the options that were displayed, is probably the best one uh, uh, for us to, to try to pursue. I guess one of the things I saw missing out of the presentation was timing. You know, it's not $12 million tomorrow. It's, you know, how long is this, uh, is, are the bidders, if, they're, if that's the right word to use here, 
going to, going to be given a certain amount of time to complete whatever you know is agreed to between uh, the various parties. There's, there was no mention of of how soon this has to happen. You did mention with the budget, it's unlikely it's going to be in this year's city budget, and it's certainly not the state with, with the things that they have to overcome this year. So I had a question on, on what is the expected timing that you're going to place on the person that bids on this project if you do the, pu the public-private partnership? I mean, how, how long are, you, are we going to be doing it? And will the this city and the surrounding neighborhood be impacted by construction, closed roads, and things of that nature while the work is being done? So that was one question I had. <clears throat> Another question I had was, um, I, I know it may seem as if it's a, a, a bit of a conflict to have private parties who might want to bid on this to be part of the working group, but they could bring to the table some, some issues that the private sector business uh, has to face when they're taking on a responsibility like this if they're at the table. So I would just think that uh, you know it would be wise if there's any opportunity in the future uh, to expand it, to have that input, even if they're not formal members of the committee, but they can at least come to a meeting and say, here's a list of the things we need to think about. Then the city, the state can also come back and say, okay, well, we can't consider that, or we can't consider this, or what will we have to trade off on, on those points? So I think uh, some input from the parties that are going to be uh, doing this would be beneficial to the mayor and to the, the working group to have that input and, and sort of have a preview of what pushback you, you might get for the different things you're going to uh, propose. Uh, and especially this, this touches on the issue of the use of the stadium. You know, if the, if the bidder has to talk about how it's going to be used, I know that's a key concern of Council uh, Representative Potter. He's mentioned that several times. Who's going to be able to use it? How is it going to be used? Ms. 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 Green just mentioned that point. And I think having somebody that, that has this idea in mind uh, would be important. And the last thing I want to mention is capital. There was one slide up there that said whoever gets the bid has to price it at reasonable similar rates to today. Well, you had another slide that said you were losing money. And the revenues that come in don't cover the, the cost of running the stadium today without the capital investment. So any business person in their right mind is going to want to have a return on their capital and, and, and have some kind of a return coming back from what they've invested, be it $12 million or, or some other figure. So I think these are, again, issues that, that you know, play a large role in this if, in fact, because of our budget constraints at all sorts of levels of government, we're going to have to rely on a private party to, uh, to do this. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Griffiths. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't see you there. I'm Jack Lee, and I live here in the neighborhood on Boehner Boulevard. Good evening. It's a very hard act to follow. <laughs> but I have one question. You had some, a proposal that kicked this off. It was the pr proposal by the Silesia Adam Group to form sort of a private partnership with the city. And because of uh, the fact that I think the, they were unsure, uh, the city was unsure, Mr. Potter was unsure, of the representation that was going to be there for the private groups, I think the thing got kind of kicked in the head and moved along down to you people. And now we're in the process again of trying to formulate the same type of private partnership along with the city who is uh, in negative balance along with the state who has the same problem. So I'd like you to try to get your act together and get something moving, in, at least in my lifetime. We're not in uh, I think most of the time, this is a, uh, a deal where the politicians and the public don't seem to meet with the same objective. So I really would like to see you do something because I think it's very important to the youth here and all the people who use that stadium to make sure 
that's available and a reasonable price for the fact of what he, uh, Mr. Goods, talked about. That can be ascertained as you go along with the revenue as opinion to what you expend on your, and you can set that up pretty easily. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Richard Bevan. I live in the uh, Triangle. I just have one question. Uh, wanted to know how option five differs than what Silesianum offered. Thank you. I mean, we can, we can, we'll put that in for our record to be able to answer those questions. To be honest, sir, I was not 100% familiar with what happened with the Silesianum proposal. That was a previous administration that was submitted. This was time to reset and see how we could come in and see what we can do to try and take a look at it. I'm not saying it. There's nobody out of any picture at all here, so we're not here tonight to have a picture. We're here to make recommendations to the mayor for five options for him to consider for a path forward. Well, how about a recommendation that uh, Slazianum be offered um, a seat at the table then? That would be fine. We appreciate your comments. I just got a quick question. How you doing? I'm <clears throat> Councilman Turner. How you doing, yeah, Councilman quick, Turner? Quick question for the committee. Will anybody on the committee sell me their existing house for $10 that you live in right now? Say that again, please. Raise your hand if anybody on the committee will sell me the house you live in right now for $10. What is the purpose of that question, Mr. Turner? So the purpose is, through this report, I don't see an assessment of what the value of Vayner Stadium is. We and don't we, value parkland. You don't, but it's, it's on a hundred and some acres. It's, it's not something that we do an assessment of parkland. So it's not possible to do assessment on parkland, period? I mean, it's, um, you, can, you can do an assessment, I'm not sure, we can do an assessment on anything. But you, but but you, but we, we need to know the value before we start talking about uh, doing doing talking about money, talking about lending it out, doing a private partner. Don't we need to know what the value of our property, a city-owned property, is first? What, what, what we can do, if you're asking the question about the value of it, we'll make a note and we'll get it to the mayor and I'll get But what, wouldn't that? But, but wouldn't that be but but wouldn't that be a consideration that you want to look at what the value of a city property is first before we start talking about private private partners? But I just want to an answer from the committee. Does anybody anybody even look at that? We got a we got a report here and it, it doesn't say that. We we did not look at the value of the asset because we are not selling the asset. We are looking for capital improvements to the asset. As I said, Parkland is not, you know, assessed at a value. Will we look at the value of Boehner Stadium? Yes, I think that's a great question for somebody to come in and give us a value of it. We looked at what the capital improvements would be to bring that stadium up for some of the proposed uses that this group looked at. But that's valid. So, hold on. The councilman has a valid question, and we said we'll look into it, correct? All right. Correct. Yes, Ms. Pitts. I uh, just wanted to um, thank you, Director Kelly. Is Mayor Przicki here, and I'm just not seeing him, or he didn't no. show up for this conversation? He, he was not here. The, the purpose of the meeting tonight was for us, the committee, to meet with the public gathered it, you know, some comment and return that back. And then pass the questions on to him. Back, everything back on to him. Okay. Um, a revenue report. I, I had a question about a revenue report because um, I just, you know, we, we're working together to, um, I know that when you do events or when anybody comes and uh, there's rental fees and things for the facility. And also I understand that there's a contractor um, for the concession, only one company is allowed to sell anything and they have an annual con multi-year contract on the park 
And I'm also interested, I know somebody mentioned Salesianum. Um, um, again, I live in the neighborhood and my son went to school right here at Warner and we noticed Salesianum uses that field probably more than any other school and we were interested in what their annual um, fee contract looks like right now, how much they're charged to, um, they use all the parking lots and all the spaces associated with Salesianum so wanted to know maybe get a revenue report, not only all the other schools that use the stadium and all the other events and things that happen there because um, the fees can seem significant to me when I look at it, but is there a revenue report that's been done from the committee? There is, we have, and we can provide that as part of it. There's been revenues that are generated by the individual schools that use the facility, the fees that they pay, and the expenses related to it. Okay. And then just, um, I really appreciate the first gentleman who spoke who's been working at the field for 20 years. Um, it doesn't look and disappear to me, but his comments were a lot more valuable than mine. But just that original bid, I don't know what affiliation or interest those two companies that provided the meat of this report, Bancroft Construction mm -hmm. and the other company, but maybe even bidding on the overall cost of the project, maybe it's not a 24 million project, maybe it's a lot less than that, or there can be an annual um, pot of money put into the upkeep of the park so it doesn't just you know, wait 30 or 40 years to completely fall in disrepair where we need to dump a bunch of money in it because it seems like even if we did that today, 30 years from now we'll be in the same situation. So maybe just making sure that all of these fees, I'm sure tens of thousands come into the park and revenue a year, go into the upkeep and maintenance so that it's not what you all say is kind of falling apart now. We can, we can prepare the information together on you know, the usages of the facility. I think there's a perception that one school uses it more than others, but um, we provide that for everyone to try and take a look and see who's actually using Boehner State. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Good evening, Ms. Potter. I'm Velda Jones Potter, and I uh, happen to serve as treasurer for the city of Wilmington. And um, I guess I, I attended a meeting, I think Councilman Namdi and State Representative Potter held at the state building probably back in March, maybe early April, and members of DEMREC and the state parks were there and provided some information, but there were considerable questions still left. Um, and I had submitted a list of questions at the time and I'd like to resubmit those um, because I really haven't heard that as many of these aspects um, even being addressed to date. I'm hopeful that this work is not complete, that there's a lot more to be done. Um, but at the top of my uh, question was, what is the city's strategic plan for Baynard Stadium? And how does it fit into the overall plan for the city's park system? And I think one of the um, women who spoke a little earlier sort of spoke to that. Like, what is the vision for it? So that we're starting with, with what we envision that facility being within our community as opposed to just diminishing it to the physical repairs that, you know, are needed, of course. But let's do that within the context of where we see this facility serving the community and fitting into the, the larger scheme of our park system. And then there were a host of questions operational. From my standpoint, the capital side of this is pretty straightforward. I, I commend the team for uh, getting at what is likely a, a somewhat more accurate assessment of the capital needs being at or around the $12 million mark than the $22 million. I would question what the priority uh, implementation of those can be. Can it be a $4 million at, at the outset and then follow on with another $4 million and then another $4 million? Um, so it would be interesting to know that. But, but that aspect of it, in my opinion, is fairly straightforward. Um, where I really think the challenge is, and I would ask what has been done so far in the other areas around the operations and the revenue side. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot. We saw, I think it's $45,000 per year. I'm assuming that's a historical figure. And yet when I look at 
um, what the, the previous interested private party uh, partner party was and you know what what they indicate were some operational changes that were going to be revenue generating and create economic um, development in and around the area so I guess I challenge us to reverse engineer their plan if you will and implement it ourselves you know people um, private entities put their capital in typically to get a return on investment or to get some additional um, benefit. Seldom do they do it just for the philanthropy. If that were the case here, the park would not be looking to be turned over in terms of operation. So clearly there are some real tangible benefits and, and it's stated right in, in sort of their earlier plan. Um, the improvements to the turf would dramatically reduce the maintenance costs. So has that been reflected, that reduction in cost expenses been reflected in a pro forma financial run of, of cash flows and earnings over the next 20 years? Um, it'll generate revenue to support its ongoing maintenance. So have those projected revenue increases been reflected in a pro forma that may show an increase above the 45,000? And is that even a good place to, to start? I mean, how effectively, how efficiently has the facility been operated in terms of uh, funds flowing in even over the last 10 or 12 years? I, I urge the committee to look very closely at the operating side, the revenue side of that equation and to really flow all the cash flow financials out um, because if someone else can make it at least self-sustaining, I believe the city of Wilmington can as well. We've got a lot of bright people and the community can. Um, so I, um, I guess that's what I challenge. And the last thing I would, I guess I would, would say is in the, um, in the, what is this? Press release that was submitted. Um, it, there's a comment two places in there that says further using significant bond funding for the construction and repairs of the athletic municipal stadium would almost certainly be viewed negatively by the bond rating agencies. In my professional experience, that is not the case. I would, would very much disagree with that. Um, the bond rating agencies look holistically at what the city is doing. And, and frankly, they view investment in any infrastructure typically as positive, and particularly something that's as central to, to a community as that facility is. So, you know, I just encourage and, and, and ask the committee to not let this be anywhere near the end of your work. I think there are so many more stones to be unturned. I encourage you to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Potter. Can you leave us your questions, please? Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Kelly. Speak up, please, Bill. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Kelly. My name is Bill Majed. I regularly use the stadium to uh, walk. Thank you, Just two minor questions. I, uh, I think you, the report mentioned that the parking is 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 uh, inadequate over there, and lighting, so forth. So, any proposals that you're proposing would probably. Um, uh, be some construction outside the stadium, not just the stadium proper, but maybe the surrounding area for parking and so forth. Am I right on that? If they were they were items that we looked at as part of this as well, Bill. The the, the stadium, the parking, uh, and other amenities of the stadium were reviewed in the in the cost proposals that we looked at. Right, and also um, whatever proposal comes comes forth and is finalized. Those persons who walk this, who get up and walk around the stadium, will they still have access to the stadium? Well, because right now it's not locked. You can just pull up any time of day or night, or day, I say day, between eight and six, and the stadium's open. You can just go around and walk the track. So will that still be accessible to the public? Community involvement accessibility will be part of any agreement that's moved forward with. Thank you, Bill. Any other questions? Oh, sorry, sir. I saw you sitting over there for a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted uh, to take a chance to listen to everybody. Okay, cool. Uh, 
Thank you. Good evening, everyone, council members and uh, concerned citizens of this community. My name is Bobby Graham, and I've lived in this community for 50 years. Um, so I have an uh, a different perspective or a unique perspective on the situation. Um, I've heard four things kind of mentioned throughout the meeting, um, and I kind of want to just address all four of them. One um, continues to talk about your ROI. Uh, your return on investment. I'm hearing a lot about operational costs, revenue driven, however we do this. I think one of the biggest things that we should know and take away from this, as a little kid, we used to dream about playing football in that stadium. Uh, they had one of the best series of summer track meets. Um, I'm a first generation of desegregation where I came to this school. Um, and even back then, every Wednesday night was a community event. Uh, each stand, each side of the stands were full of parents, people in the community, west side, north side, riverside, south bridge, everyone competing for the common good. So I've heard a lot of things about return on investment and we're thinking dollars, dollars, dollars. What about our children? What about our people? What about a gym for the city? If it takes four millions to get this project started and slow walk it versus selling it off, and again, I've lived across the street for Silesiana, and they're a good neighbor. However, what drives them to compete in the class where they are with stadiums, using the field over and over again, it's a constant battle with parking, with their constituents parking in lots of elderly people driveways with the attitude of we can do this because we're only going to be here for a while and it's a public street. Just as well as fire hydrants, bus stops, whenever they have an event, it's okay to do that. Now, they're not a bad neighbor. I'm simply saying when we look at the ways to keep this stadium for the city and as a gym, we have to understand where we want to go. I've heard about vision, but I haven't seen any vision. What is the vision of having the stadium? Is it to have one of the best unique recreational centers in Wilmington? Or is it to continue to provide services for like your Howards, for like your St. Elizabeth's, for like your Dickinson's, for us kids to have something in the city that we can call our own? That we could dream and have a dream of playing there and going professional or going to college. We have to look at division. Um, ownership, I mean, we can duplicate a lot of things. I mean, we're not the pros, but how come we can't have private ownership selling their name? Capital One, Banner Stadium. Give us 100 mil, let us do what we need to do. I know that sounds funny, but these are the things as citizens of Wilmington, we should be able to do. Um, the last part, which I find like you're talking to your supervisor and he doesn't have an answer, is valuation. How can you have an emerging drug company across the street who brought the Wanamaker's building, building another building next to that building, and we don't know the valuation of another gym right across the street? I mean, property value typically goes up, especially in this neighborhood. There has to be a huge number on that. Um, finally, I'd like to thank everyone for having this meeting, coming out. I did not get a press release. I'm not going to complain about that. But again, okay. if we're, if we're going to do something, I would figure there's less than 100 people that we would have enough information to, cir to circulate around. But I appreciate everybody coming out and allowing me to talk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Your comments are very well taken about the youth. At the end of the day, that's really what it's all about with this proposal. Okay. Any other comments? Do any of the committee members have anything they'd like to say? Oh, my gosh. I know you do. No, I just really want to thank everybody for coming out. And um, when you come in anyone's community, any community should have the right to um, Take a look at the new project coming in your neighborhood. That's very simple. Anyone who has, an, is, has a problem with the community having input and seeing what the project is, you know, that's up to them. Uh, but I look forward to working with everybody on this committee. 
I hope Salazie Adam comes to the table along with all the other schools. We need all hands on deck. And whatever it fares out to be, whatever the best project is, I don't want to see anybody steer it or skew it. That's what it comes out to be, because that will be the best project. And that's where I stand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Mr. Adams, how are you doing this evening? Good, good, Thank you. good. Hey, I didn't want to speak at the CPA, not having a counselor. Then you got to come over to the podium. Yeah, yeah. Come on, forever holds your peace, all right? Yeah, yeah, let, let me try to help some folks out here. Hey, how you doing? I know you only see me at a meeting, but uh, someone knows that you have a big time job. Uh, the White Party is going to be Please state, state your name and address. Uh, my name is Cyril Adams. I'm a CPA. I um, have been for a few years now. Uh, everybody's talking about valuation, so let me help you out just a little bit here. There's basically three methods of valuation. Um, comparable, or what you call market rate, or fair value of that and how are you going to measure the comparability of a sale of a stadium at a local high school? Don't think you'd find it comparable, so perhaps it's not the best way to look at it. Second way, discounted cash flow, uh, like Velda mentioned. Okay, now, we're talking about, nah, let's make the numbers uh, 10 million instead of 12 million. Okay, so to have an 8% cash flow, to value that at 8%, come up with a $10 million number, you'd have to have uh, a net uh, revenue net of expenses of $800,000 a year. So if you have eight high schools using the field, that means each one of them is going to pay $100,000 a year to use a football field. Now, I don't think a DCF method would work too well on that because it's really out of pocket there. So the last method really is replacement costs. And as you saw, the committee put up there $12.4 million. So what you brought, a uh, stadium assessed at 12.4 million. We're not selling the parkland, so you don't need assessment of parkland. So uh, hey, uh, until the committee gets a better number, if you want an assessment of property, replacement cost is 12.4 million, that's what it is. Think about it, what's the uh, replacement cost on your car if you get it uh, in a total of a wreck, okay? That's your replacement cost, that's what they give you to repay for it. So that's basically what you're doing. Are you rebuilding a brand new car? You want to go out and buy a new car? It'll cost you 32000 versus 3200 that they give you for salvage. So uh, out of three methods, I would think in this particular circumstance, my professional opinion, replacement cost is probably the best one to go with. $12.4 is where it's at. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Adam, CPA. Thank you. You were two hats, that's all. Um, I, I appreciate everyone coming out tonight and having a thoughtful, serious, considerable conversation about the future of Baynard Stadium. We have no predetermined notion of where this is going to head. I think we all agree that there's investment that needs to take place in Baynard Stadium. If you look throughout this city, hundreds of people and thousands of athletes and individuals have come through Baynard Stadium. Um, how do we make it better? That's going to take some effort from a lot of people to put some egos aside to see what is the best way to move forward. At the end of the day, it's all about the young people of the city. How do we create some opportunities for them to be able to be expanding their horizons to play in that stadium, whatever that may be, and whoever may be running it? Um, for the group, it was challenging to get to Z about what's the stadium going to look like in sponsorship and royalties and all the other things that go along with it but we try to look at it from a capital investment standpoint of what you need to do to bring it up to be able to move that ball forward the mayor created the group with a specific purpose to look at making some recommendations to him to consider and that's what the group has done i think people in this room have their ideas of what they think is the best method and how to get there but i'm sure we're going to be able to get there the can I finish, Mr. Potter? Okay. So we, we have a recommendation that we want to present to the mayor regarding this proposal. That recommendation is going to be reviewed by the mayor for his consideration. At the end of the day, the people who are going to be the final ones to be able to do this are the community, the city council, 
the stakeholders, the partners, and the young people. They will we'll determine the royal way about the best path for it to be able to, what's going to happen with Boehner Stadium. But tonight we've had some options. We have everybody's questions. If there are additional questions anyone has, you can call me at 576-3813 or send me an email at kevinfkelly at wilmingtonde.gov. Uh, we'll let you know again if there's a future public meeting that we will have with everyone. That was the purpose tonight to come out to hear from individuals the questions that they have. With that, I thank everyone for coming this evening. Thank you.